Good evening, ladies. In this video, this is kind of a podcast style interview with my friend Confugen, and we go over a huge range of topics. This show is absolutely packed with alpha, so throw it on in the background while you're doing the dishes, or while you're driving, and you can glance at this. It's just me screen sharing for the majority of the session, so I'm ch sharing a few charts and sharing a few plays and what we're looking out for in the medium term and in the short term. and you know, there are certain sectors which I think are going to outperform in the medium term. So make sure if you want to be prepared for the next Bitcoin pump and the next crypto pump, you listen to this episode. So really hope you enjoy. I'll leave uh, the link for Confugen, his Twitter and his uh, Telegram group in the description. So if you want to join that, he's he's really good with these like uh, mean coins. He's really good with this like new stuff that's really fresh and really just popping off and we have discussions about all them so really really hope you enjoy the video and cheers all right what's up everyone today we're going to be talking about meme coins are meme coins over are meme coins dead is the markets completely dead is it going to come back we're going to talk about what sectors to be looking at for the next market cycle and today we're joined again by coffee gen so thanks a million for coming back on really appreciate it yeah and... no worries uh thanks for having me back Sweet, sweet. You're welcome. And uh, I think we were just having a quick chat before we started on what we think is happening with the markets. You're saying you're a, a perma bull like myself. So like, who knows what happens in the very, very short term. But, you know, I don't, I don't think crypto is topped by any, by any means at all. And I think we're going to go much higher. But when that happens, I, I have no idea. But hopefully soon. And yeah, we're going to talk about what how we're preparing what we're doing right now to prepare for the next big pump and where you should be looking. And uh, so what kind of your thought processes and what, where do you think we are in the, where, how long do we have to wait before the next pump in your opinion? Yeah. So um, I think it's just in terms of how you probably agree with me is in terms of how they, the fed, what the fed does, like, it looks like they're gonna price. It looks like they're gonna do like a big interest rate cut, like 0.5% basis points, uh, which is like a kind of a bearish signal to the market. But then usually once they do something like that, we normally get, it does take a bit of time, but then we normally get like a bull market again. Um, so I think the jobs data today was not good. That really suggests we're gonna get a big interest rate cut. I think the market's pricing it in and yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe, maybe this year might be a bit tricky. Like they say September's rectember, maybe we have October uh, in October. I don't know, but I, I do feel like it's not as bad as the kind of Twitter timeline is, is, is kind of predicting. Yeah. That's interesting. And yeah, the chances of a 25 basis point rate compared to a 50 basis rate cut has completely changed like in the last month or so and it's becoming more and more likely that's going to be a 50 basis point cut which is like most a lot of people are saying that's bearish but like in reality in the long term that's extremely bullish like the the only reason it would be bearish is if there is a recession if there's a real reason that they're cutting like if things are going to absolute shit and then they're cutting because of that and things are kind of being bad but they're not like terrible. And the fact that they're making money cheap again, and you're going to start rapidly making money cheap again is bullish long-term. And that's what we've all been waiting for in crypto. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So like, as you said, like as, as they keep cutting the interest rates, eventually it's going to get bullish because you get every like VCs and, and banks and institutions just get more risk on, don't they? Cause money's cheaper. So so yeah, I I just think it might be a bit of short term pain, but but for but then it'll be worth it, I think. Yeah, and we've been going through chop for ages, and I don't know, we could get one big nuke. So, like, if we do get a big nuke, I, I would like down to I don't know, even forty forty thousand on Bitcoin and all coins down another fifty percent or something. Like, I don't think that I I think that would be probably the last generational entry on crypto. Um, now do we v-shape recovery out of that or do we just bounce for a little bit longer before the next pump i have no idea but 
what I'm kind of doing at the moment is I'm researching a lot on where the sectors I'm most interested in and projects uh, for the next pump, what I think is going to outperform. And there's like various clues that we can look at to try and find that out. And the other thing I'm doing is doing a little bit of airdrop farming. So maybe I'll talk about that later. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought this was a good tweet from Ansem to kind of uh, help you find what's going to outperform in the next pump. So it's basically saying like, what is actually outperforming Bitcoin in comparisons to when Bitcoin had a big drop? Obviously, every single altcoin had a bigger drop, basically. But which ones are outperforming since then? I have a couple of examples. Um, this is Aave and Helium. And these are kind of two of the sectors that I've been very interested in uh, recently because, yeah, Aave has been actually silently making higher highs and higher lows, just kind of turning around, but still has a lot of runway to come up. And the exact same thing with Helium. It's, I know that doesn't look great, but this is from the, had a crazy pump at the start of the year. But if we look compared to Bitcoin, we can see higher, higher highs, higher lows. And, you know, it looks very bullish and there's plenty of room for it to run. You know what I mean? So this is Helium. This is a deep in project. And obviously Aave is a DeFi, a DeFi project. So they're kind of two sectors that I think like DeFi is getting a lot of, um, it's getting a lot of talk at the moment because it's like theoretically very undervalued in comparisons to its cash flows and like Aave and Maker, which we discussed last week. But also Deepin, I think, is one of the hot sectors of this cycle. It was like Helium was around in the last cycle, but like Deepin wasn't even a, a, a thing in the last cycle. This was the only project doing it. But now Deepin is probably going to be one of the biggest, hot, hottest top topics of this cycle. So they're two of the two of the sectors I'm kind of researching at the moment. Yeah, no, no, same here. Those, those are the two that are standing out to me because of Anson's tweets actually as well. And um, just looking, because I always look every few days, I go on CoinGecko, look at the top uh, movers, the top the, the top 100 um, coins and, and which ones have moved the most. Yeah. And yeah, Ave, like you said, Ave today was a top mover. Uh, um, oh, yeah, and I right, think yeah. helium was, I don't know if you said, Oh, yeah. that helium had True. a big move as well yeah so in the top three but that's them. also a big move yeah, yeah yeah so um they, they've really got my interest actually i haven't got any exposure but i'm looking at especially helium i do like the the deep end narrative quite a bit so that is really interesting to me yeah and then the thing with these i actually i only own a tiny bit of helium i don't own any ave but Considering probably you, you're the same. You're well. Myself personally, I'm more interested in like Sol the Solana side of things. So I started. I'm farming Camino quite hard, which is basically Ave on Solana, but it also is a, a liquidity provider. So Camino, you know, is like one tenth the market cap of Ave. It's on Solana. Probably going to. Like a lot of people, I know Ave is, has the Lindy effect and has like maybe more trust and stuff. But, you know, I think people do like, it, it's a, a lot less clunky to use DeFi on Solana. In my opinion, there's no transaction fees. It's all lightning fast. So if, if and you don't have to pay any fees, like you don't have to pay $50 in order to take out a loan. You can just take out a loan for free, essentially. So that's what I've kind of been looking at Solana DeFi projects. So Camino would be the obvious uh, comparative to Ave, and then helium i'm kind of also looking uh, a little bit further well not necessarily further down the risk curve but i'm looking at other projects in the deep in space that aren't as that are going through their first cycle like just like camino is going through its first cycle so i think you know, the new cycle coins like tend to have more potential upside because they're starting from a lower base and then like one example of a new DeFi, DeFi coin is the Hive Mapper uh, token that we were talking about last time. Now, the tokenomics with some of these coins is terrible, and the recent price action has been pretty abysmal. So it's down quite a lot. So we have to wait until it starts making a trend again. Maybe I'll show this on a. This is the Helium chart. So the Helium chart obviously looks good. 
Um, but let's have a look at the honey chart. Like we potentially before buying this, we'd want to uh, wait till it starts having a bit more of a clear uptrend. Um, but yeah, that's another one I'm keeping an eye on. As well as all the decentralized storage, that's they're they're kind of decentralized storage and decentralized uh compute power. They're a, a little bit more AI coins, but like you Nasana, know, for example, is another one on Solana that I like. Um, so yeah, AI is also deep in an AI. They're kind of well, there are coins that are within both niches, but yeah, deep in an AI are definitely two sectors I'm keeping an eye on as well. Yeah. I agree. Like new narratives always pump the hardest. So like AI and um, Deepin is the two that I'm looking at closely, especially like you said on Solana, because last cycle Ethereum was like the chain, wasn't it? And now this cycle Solana is the culture chain with all the like base devs and everything. So that's definitely where I'm I'm looking at. Like I'm looking at those two categories, and then like you narrowing on Solana's uh, apps and stuff that are doing this sort of thing. Um, Ave though is interesting because Donald Trump's got, got oh, a DeFi yeah. chain, right? On Ave. So yeah. in terms of a narrative, it's quite nice. Uh, I'm probably not going to buy it, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if it, if it carries on pumping. Yeah, that's actually crazy. I, I don't have that up anywhere, but yeah, Donald Trump is making a basically forked Ave or made a borrow land platform on Ethereum. Well, not him personally, but his family member or something. Oh, that's Perhaps. right. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't trust that family since they rugged two tokens. Well, okay. They yeah. didn't exactly rug them, but you know, they're associated with two tokens that rugged. So yeah, I just don't trust anything. Yeah. Like really. so. yeah and Donald Trump has been pumping out unlimited nft projects as well <laughs> yeah 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 that's crazy too and people <laughs> keep buying them. them i know yeah and they're actually a lot of the time they pump like if you buy them they yeah. actually do well that's the thing yeah especially the first one i think they went to like one ETH after like a yeah, hundred dollars yeah. uh you know mint yeah and there was like what twenty thousand fifty thousand of them or something outrageous yeah yeah it's insane yeah yeah, so yeah, Hive Mapper is has the is the decentralized mapping uh project. Yeah, this one. I nearly which, bought one of those. I remember they were selling really? them pretty cheap. I think they were selling yeah. them pretty cheap around Christmas. Uh, I think this guy I follow, Default Trader, you might follow him too. He yeah. was uh promoting it on the timeline. And my friend bought one, but I, I think I didn't end up buying one because it was like a long wait, and then I was like. I should probably should have just bought one because it's pretty cool, right? Decentralized Google Maps kind of thing. So yeah, mm. I even even though I think if we do have like a wave of deep in, look at this. You like how last cycle we had, yeah. You had last cycle oh. we had a gaming narrative and and all that. Then everything in that sector pumps, right? So then yeah. this would be quite. Even though it kind of looks horrible right now, if you can kind of be patient with it, it could be a good one. Yeah, and I, I think like in the last cycle. Uh, people who bought the helium nodes uh, for more decentralized, what was it? Decentralized. It wasn't mobile back then. It's just decentralized. I can't even remember. Decentralized. I forget what he, helium started out as. Anyway, any decentralized, like something mm. like that. Not broadband, not Wi Fi. Doesn't matter. I can't remember right now, but. Yeah, anyone who bought the first ones and stuck up, stuck them up in their house or on the business, like the first few, I don't know, thousand people all made like six figures from that wow. little device. Yeah, so it's just crazy. And I think those uh, Hive Mapper cameras, they were going for like two or three times the price on eBay. Like once they sold out from the company, they were selling them on eBay for like multiples. It's the same with the Solana uh -huh. phone. Yeah, I remember the Solana phone was selling for like two grand a pop when he could have bought it for seven hundred or five hundred dollars. Yeah, I did buy one of those, the first one. I kind of wish I just sold it after I claimed the airdrops. Yeah, same. Uh, I'm still holding it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. got it too, yeah. I think you yeah. can farm helium on it, right? I haven't actually put that on. I probably should. Yeah, no, it's I think it's just in the US. 
So Oh, that's why. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. probably why I didn't do it. Mm. Yeah, but helium, yeah, like the the only problem with these deep deep in projects is the tokenomics. So like obviously the idea is so bullish and helium the other thing about helium is they all like they have the helium token which is uh the og one and then they have this mobile token as well which is for the decentralized mobile service and this one hasn't really been doing much you know what i mean so right like it's kind of hard to know which one to buy it's a little bit confusing um sorry i'll, I'll roll out this uh yeah, so it's still going down, as you can see. It's not really like I, I think this is you're rewarded in the mobile tokens for like providing signal for decentralized cellular service. So there's uh, I'm not sure if there's like a token sync for this yet. So that's why it's just been people get the tokens and just sell them straight away. So it's kind of the only problem with DPN, it's kind of hard to know like what how to invest in it. Like it's probably the same things happening with this honey token. Like people are earning these honey tokens and selling them straight away. So, well, the difference, I don't, I'm not sure with mobile. I think it actually is the same with the mobile token, but I know for a fact that with the honey token, in order to get access to the maps, like if you're a business that wants the like very up-to-date fresh maps that people are driving around in their cars and videoing everything, if you want access to that, you have to pay in the honey token. So that uh, that is like a token sync and it does burn some of the honey tokens. So it is interesting. And as the maps get more useful and more up to date and more people get get these little cameras and drive around, the maps get better. So the idea is that more people will buy the honey tokens in order to access those better maps. Um. So oh, yeah. Yeah, honey does it is interesting, but yeah, I would potentially wait until it starts showing a bit of life. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing. Like deep in just sounds so interesting. It's such a good, it's such a good normy friendly thing to understand. It's not as like stupid or not stupid, but it's not as stupid as meme coins, where it's just like, oh, anyone can think that's you know, anyone can buy that. It's like, okay, it's a little bit technical, like a tiny bit technical. But I think most people could un like wrap their head around it after like a one hour of research and be like, oh, this is actually really interesting. Whereas something like, you know, parallelized AI, EVM, layer two scaling, whatever, like normies are just never going to buy that. But with DPIN, it's just quite simple, but also quite useful and interesting. And it's new, new cycle, new coins. Um, so yeah, DPIN is definitely definitely a nice one yeah if they if they can find a way to market it like which i think they can maybe deep in itself is not a good name for it but if they can like kind of market it a bit more stronger to the normies then yeah it's like as if you know like how facebook uh sells your data and you don't earn any money from it it's kind of like with deep in okay yeah they're gonna sell your data but at least they're gonna pay you for it it's kind of mm. like that right so uh yeah, yeah it's quite interesting yeah and i think the other nice thing with deep in in regards to normies is normies don't even have to buy necessarily any coins they can just be like oh i can just earn money for putting a little device in my house or for putting a little device on my car this is like i'm i'm gonna scam all these crypto idiots and sell them these tokens i'm gonna be a genius and provide all this data and earn money doing it like people i think people will like that idea as well yeah yeah totally totally agree i i yeah it's definitely on my radar as something i need to like have in my portfolio yeah and i think uh another one that have you been farming grass the ai data um the AI um, data thing, no, this one. No, well, so I wanted to farm it, but I'm a bit scared of downloading extensions on my laptop, so I didn't. Again, I think I could have farmed it on the Sana phone, but I just forgot. I think you can, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, well, it's, it's I, basically I farm it. 
Uh, it's basically uh, finishing up, but they, I think they dropped how many tokens you're going to get. I haven't even checked, but yeah, I think people were not happy with it. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised that everyone was farming it. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think the, I think I'm going to get like 33 tokens. So I have no idea what that price will be. Hopefully it's going to be at least uh, like $10 or something. But yeah, I think even though I've had this for months and had a few people ref like on the referrals, doesn't look like it's going to be a huge airdrop, but it's actually a really, really interesting project. And um, basically what it does, it uses your excess broadband, your excess, yeah, your excess broadband to, how do I get rid of this? Uh, to scrape the internet. So like when you're doing your normal browsing and you're not using every last bit of your broadband, it's going to go out and scrape the internet for you and get around the blockers that don't let, um, that don't let like bots do that. So like basically skirting that and being able to sell that data to AI companies that are trying to make a large language model. So it's a very interesting project. Um, so I do like, once the token does go live, it will definitely be one I'm going to keep an eye on as well. And yeah, probably this, that, not... that actually sounds like the most interesting one, actually. I didn't realize it was doing that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like I probably won't sell my 33 tokens. I'll probably just hang <laughs> on to them. <laughs> it's a good narrative, right? Like, yeah, if you're only getting yeah. that much, then yeah, I, I normally hold my airdrops if I get them at least for a little while because yeah. um, they're always oversold at the beginning anyway. Yeah. No, the airdrops have been down only the cycle. Like, I think you said this is your first cycle. So I was here in 2021. So oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, second. Uh, cycle. But that was that was my yeah yeah that was my first cycle. But yeah. I was more more being more active this cycle to be honest. Yeah, because I remember last cycle, like airdrops would all pump. Like people would get their airdrop and they would buy more instead of selling it. But it's just not being the case at all this cycle. Like every airdrop I've gotten has gone down. Like I don't know, sixty percent at least which has just been horrible because then you owe tax on the airdrop, like up to 50% tax. And if it goes down 60%, you actually lost money by claiming the airdrop, which is just crazy if you held on to yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I've That's done exciting. that on a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just, I'm so used to the airdrop pump. You sell it and then it goes, then it goes to shit. But we just didn't get that at all this cycle, which is a shame. Like blast was crap. Like, well, it wasn't crap. Like it was a good airdrop, but it went down only after the airdrop. Same with uh, Tensor, Camino. Uh, I think Gito did okay. Um, but yeah, basically most all of them are down. I don't think any airdrop is up from its TGE. Uh, but yeah, so I do I think, think it's. I think um the only one I can think of that went up was Uwu. I didn't even get that one. Oh but... yeah, yeah, yeah. That one went up from like one mil to like maybe twenty or thirty mil. Um, yeah. it's down now, but yeah, yeah. Down now. I, I think the reason that one did well was it had a utility straight. You could use the token to buy memojis, so it had a sync. So I think that's why it went up. Yeah, true. Oh, here's the chart. Yeah, you're right. I actually have. I got like, I think like a couple of hundred dollars worth of this. But I, I, it's on Cosmos, so I don't even think I'm able to sell it. Um, you can, you can only sell it OTC, because uh, I actually bought yeah. some on Cosmos recently. Oh really? OTC. Yeah, I just wanted to buy some of the uh, Memojis just in case they okay do something in future. So. Yeah, cool. Is it hard to buy them? I didn't even look at that at all. Um, no, it's really easy. You just go on the website. Um, I think it's Unicorn Meme, and then. There's a marketplace and you can just swap your UU on Cosmos. You connect your Kepler wallet and you can just swap it on there for uh, some emojis. So yeah, I just bought like some of the top ones, only like a small amount, but just in case. Yeah, so there's the site and uh, these are like kind of NFT things, are they? Yeah, so if you click on Memoji market, um, oh. yeah. So then, yeah, and then just... if you tick that box saying show prices in USD, because that'll give you a oh, yeah. better uh, picture. 
um, under the unicorn uh, gift. Oh, Jesus, sorry. I had to, uh, the music was playing for me. Was it not playing uh, yeah. for you? <laughs> no, no, it's not. The oh, music's God. wild. <laughs> uh, sorry, what were you saying? So oh, you if you click that here. show prices in USD uh, box, uh, you know, like, yeah, there. It'll give okay. you a better picture of the market caps. But yeah, this, the, so you can just buy, you can just swap your uh, Uru and buy these emojis. So I bought the cat one, the crying cat, because that looks like the top one. Um, okay, yeah. Oh, they're up today. I don't know what, I don't even know what market cap I bought at. And I bought, um, I think I bought the oranges and I bought something else. Yeah. It's just kind of fun. Like it's something yeah. different. And yeah, I just thought, why not? Okay, I'm gonna buy a few of these. I think after like this, um, I think we have ten minutes left because I'm a brokey and don't have the Zoom Pro. <laughs> um, oh, nice. <laughs> I think uh, kind of the, well, we talked a little bit about farming. Um, I said it to you that the only things I'm farming are hyper liquid at the moment, and another thing I'm doing is I'm doing like a del delta neutral stat strategy on poly market. So like I've open to trade that Donald Trump will win the election on poly market and open a trade on drift saying Donald, Donald Trump will lose the market. So busy farming the airdrop with no risk on both platforms. So that's something people could look out for. Is so that... I think poly market. Huh? Oh, no, no, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I think that's like poly market, you know, could be a, if the, if they do airdrop, I think that could be a, a nice one because it's like one of the biggest, apps that's doing well this cycle yeah i was gonna ask so that so it's not confirmed the airdrop right i think i've used poly market once just to uh yeah just to try it out it's quite nice yeah but i didn't so that's interesting so you think there could be an airdrop so yeah just it's probably worth farming it look using it a little bit just in case exactly and it like probably better if they don't say there's going to be an airdrop and then they do an airdrop because you know there's way less competition because there's no like there's no airdrop farmers farming it it's just you know mostly users so the airdrop could be a lot better if no industrial farmers just bots coming in with a load of money trying to farm it yeah exactly i think that's why all the airdrops so far have been down only because people farm the airdrop like blast yeah. right and yeah exactly. but if you're like if if it's unexpected and people actually just use the platform they're less like you say they're just less, less likely to sell it because they actually like the platform and using it yeah. organically so that's what happened with Gito. at the very start of solana pumping Gito did their airdrop and no one was farming it really and anyone who had a bit of Gito soul ended up getting a massive airdrop just because no one was expecting it so that's kind of like the the alvon airdrop is, is to like go for the ones that no one's expecting. Like I know everyone is looking at hyper liquid, so you know it's probably not going to be as good as people are hoping, in my opinion. But still worth farming. But um, yeah, if Poly Market did did an airdrop, I'd say it would be good because of that. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, I, we've got some big airdrops soon, right? So there's some. Well, I guess the biggest one coming up is Magic Eden. So that one hopefully will be good. But again, I think it'll be down only because like everyone's getting it and people are farming it. So, hmm. so yeah. yeah. I think you, you can trade the diamonds already on Wales market. But you have no idea how much the, how many tokens the diamonds are going to be. So it's just a complete gamble. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I'm not going to lie, I'm probably just going to instantly sell my airdrop. Like, even though I, I like Magic Eden, I think it's the best marketplace uh, with the most volume. Uh, I just think I'm just going to, I'm probably going to sell, or I'm at least going to sell 50% of it straight away. Yeah, man, I held on, well, I didn't hold on to all of my Tensor, but, you know, I got a very decent airdrop. And, yeah, like... What's that down like eighty percent? So yeah, it's pretty pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can see I sold some at least, but yeah. Um, I sold all mine too. I I sold all my te uh, tensor, but the only one Solana I held 
Sun was Jupiter, just because, I don't mm-hmm. know, I, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I just kind of like that one for some reason. Uh, I just think it's a good protocol, but, but yeah. I think I saw. I think I swapped it recently for meme coin. I don't know if that trade was works out well or not. But yeah, Jupiter is one that actually pumped after it dropped. It did, and, but it and was it's actually it was still up. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was hard to hold it because it dumped like crazy at first, and everyone was like, "It's going lower," and then it actually pumped. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, it still worked like like billions, seven billion fully diluted. So. Uh, I only have a small bit of Ju- Jupiter. Like it's definitely like the place that people the most interacted with app on Solana. But you know, I think there's probably better value tokens within the DeFi space on Solana, like Camino or like Radium is another one I like, which is where most of Jupiter's trades go through, or a lot of Jupiter's trades go through, and that's like one one seventh the market cap. Yeah, so great. There, Radium is a very good one. Yeah. And yeah, the chart actually looks all right for Radium as well. So, um, Also, speaking of airdrop farming, Jupiter, I think, is again under farmed. Like, obviously, more people are using, doing Solana memes now than when we first farmed it like a few years ago. But like, a lot of people are using Photon and stuff, right? Like bots. And I don't know if that counts. I guess it doesn't. So I do tend to swap still on, even when I'm buying meme coins, if I'm buying, if I'm not in a rush, I'll just try and use Jupiter as swap on there or bird's eye. I'm um, pretty sure it does go through Jupiter on okay. those bots. Yeah. But using those bots is still like 1% for each trade that they take, which is actually a lot. So it's if insane, doing it, actually. Yeah. When you're doing it through Jupiter, you're saving one percent, which like obviously doesn't seem like a lot when you're trying to make a a two x or something. But you know it adds up. It adds up a lot. Like if you like between slippage and all those fees, like you're getting probably five percent. You're paying to get in and out of every trade, which is insane in comparison to any other like kind of trade. Like yeah. Yeah, it's actually crazy. I stopped using Photon for that reason, actually. Um, yeah. just, it was, I was just getting wiped out. If I was doing small trades, I was just getting wiped out with the fees. So it wasn't <laughs> worth it for me. What the hell is that chart? Oh, that's uh, Helium. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, fucking hell. I, no, yeah, that's, that's fine, because it's an old coin. If it was a meme coin, I'd be scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty down only. I think that's, yeah, just basically because of token inflation. Like, if you looked at the... Market cap will probably be fine. I think if we have it here. Oh, um, it looks fine when you look at that view. Yeah. So this is this is oh it doesn't have it from the very start. But if you look at the market cap, it's actually much well, it's not actually that much different. Anyway. Oh, oh that looks wrong. okay actually. That's that's a good chart. Sorry, that was the wrong that's the wrong ticker. <laughs> Don't know why I went to that. <laughs> Uh, max price, yeah, like Jays, it looks terrible. And then market cap, oh, I guess it's... looks the same. Looks the same on this one, so yeah, no, it's just damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's curling. It, I guess people call it, call it curling, right, on the timeline. Maybe it's coming back. Yeah, yeah, it's coming back, baby. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh yeah. So last last uh, week we were talking about meme coins, and we we're kind of saying, well, I was saying that I think we we're agreeing that meme coins like it's completely pvp and super negative ev to be playing in meme coins right now like maybe we're both dabbling in them a bit i think the only kind of meme coin that's done well recently is the, the fog one that you were talking about um but yeah that actually does seem to be still doing well and it has like a good community like whoa look at that like that, that looks ready to send <laughs> please send it send it to like a billion <laughs> <laughs> I, I sold this one early i think i sold it like 50 um oh, yeah, the, good yeah the art on it is good like it's, and there's a lot of good chads in it as well yeah yeah i'm I'm a big fan of this one because solana didn't have a frog like yeah. ethereum's got pepe and i know people are saying this is a pepe of solana 
I guess it's not really like Pepe, but it's just a frog. And we've had loads of cats and dogs. We've had dog with hat and pop cat. They're the clear leaders. So it's nice to have a frog. And and yeah, like you said, the memes and the oh, the memes are just so good. I think the the yeah. artist is just very dedicated. You can tell he actually trades in the space because they're maybe not that one, but but generally they're pretty um pretty relevant yeah, to the space. Yeah. Yeah. Like I find stuff. myself saving them in case I want to share them with you know, like in the relevant situation. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it, has, it does fun. have that. Yeah, easy to like. Like it's, I I think it is easy to like. It is funny, but I I think the Pepe meme is a little bit better. But obviously, like this is new. Um, the Pepe one just looks so funny. Like it just works so well as a meme, but. This one could, could like you know, start being used as a meme, and that's that's kind of like what, like what a lot of people are saying right now is if is your meme actually a meme that people use? So that's why Dogecoin did so well because it's actually a meme. Um, like Giga is another one that is actually a meme that people use. So like I don't know, like maybe that could be a thing. Um, because I know like. Dog with hat isn't really a meme that anyone uses anymore. Like I think people use it briefly. Maybe popcap people use it a little bit, but that's something maybe to think about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think um, it reminds me. It's a bit different, frog. Frog. I think it reminds you of like uh, pudgy penguins, like the way it's building IP of the character. Yeah. Uh, but but instead of using an NFT, they're just they're just using a meme coin. So. You don't have to actually buy an expensive NFT. You can just buy like one dollar of the meme coin and be part of the the community. I, I they're not, and I guess they are. I think they were gonna do NFTs, but they're not now or something. I'm not really yeah. sure what. I think I, I, I think they're not gonna something. do it now. Yeah, he basically just like made uh, custom PFPs for different influencers. I think the artist to kind of spread the message instead of making like a, a whole NFT collection that could dilute it so it's exactly, just kind of sp yeah. spreading the brand without like taking away from the token so yeah it's definitely one to i think it's be pretty in. smart yeah definitely like right now there's just there's no liquidity for nfts yeah and i think it would have caused like fud if people couldn't if whales couldn't mint or uh i don't know if the quality wasn't like i'm sure the quality would be good but you know there's loads of execution risk with NFTs. And like, so the other token I really like is Brainlet. And the founder, like you've probably seen a lot of NFTs have been inspired to make Brainlet type NFTs. Um, and the founder said, there's no NFT for this. He's not going to endorse any NFT for Brainlet because he doesn't want liquidity to go to be split with an NFT and the token, uh, which makes sense. So um yeah i think frog is going down the same path and i actually mm. don't even have that much brain i probably have like one solana worth uh but it's something i want to buy it's just uh, uh i'm just waiting to get some liquidity maybe from like magic eden airdrop or something i'll probably buy some uh brain yeah like like what do you think about the meme coin sector right now i know for me personally i've I kind of think meme coins had such a big pump in March and being the only thing that's pumping the entire cycle really. And everyone's calling for a meme coin super cycle that like, I don't know, I think memes, like, I don't think they're, they're topped for the cycle whatsoever, but I definitely think they do need a, a, a break and potentially other sectors can outperform in the medium term. So maybe the other sectors that we were talking about earlier is where I'm looking at, but like, what do you think, like, in the medium term, what what are your thoughts on meme coins? Like, say, we keep chopping around for the next two or three months, and then what are your thoughts on meme coins? Like, are they going to be still the best trade for the whole cycle, even from this point? Yeah, I think it's a bit tricky because they have become a bit of a consensus trade, which is not always good. Exactly. Um, but then when I look at, like, when things dump and then come back, like when you look at the top gainers again, you, you're seeing like dog with hat or Pepe in the top gainers. So 
um, there's still appetite for it. Um, I think it's become like a last cycle. I know some some did well, but not a lot. But now it's become like a serious sector. So I think they'll trade like alts, like the top meme coins, like Dog with Hat and Popcat. They'll probably trade more like altcoins and they won't give you as crazy gains. Obviously, you're going to have pump funds that do well. Um, but you're also seeing like Vista on Ethereum um, being like the pump fund of Ethereum. I, there's nothing that's really popped off there, but but I don't know. I I think I think it's still going to be a good narrative. But like you said, it's better to be like for me, I, I find them quite fun. So I still will be, you know, looking at them. But yeah, I think it's better to be looking at non-consensus trades now, which is probably deep in or gaming or um uh AI or something. Because yeah, th there's probably stuff there that could likely outperform Pepe and Popcat and and things like that. Cause I, I mean, like things like Giga and Frog, if this was like four or five months ago, they would I'm sure one of them would have hit a billion already. I'm sure like Giga would have hit a billion because of how popular it is. So yeah, just based on that, there there is a lot, there is a bit less liquidity in, in the that sector now. Um yeah, definitely. Um can't remember what I was gonna say. Um that Morad guy, he's uh oh, yeah. He has an interesting list of memes. I don't really, I don't know. I'm, the only one I really like on his list, I think I obviously like, I like, okay, I like a few. Actually, his list is pretty good. I I think I like right, let's the find top four on his list. Because these are, he does have a, maybe it's pinned. No. Because he has this, um, a list of all his most favorite memes. Might be hard to find. Um, I didn't realize smoking chicken fish was on his list. I don't have that anymore, but I do like that token. Yeah. Oh yeah. Remember what I was gonna say. Um. Yeah, I was just gonna say that for meme coins as well. I kind of sold off any kind of meme coin that hasn't like any of these meme coins that hasn't like hit a hundred million or 50 million doesn't have a strong community like i think a lot of those are going to die over the next few months and if you want to be involved in the memes in the meme coins like still a huge portion of my way too large portion of my portfolio is meme coins but uh if you want to be properly allocated to meme coins i would be looking at the established ones and then i would be looking for the new ones for the next pump i wouldn't be looking at the kind of ones that you know, or a small market cap maybe got up to 10 or 20 million and kind of down at 1 million. Like, it's probably risky, look, like, keeping large amounts of them. Like, even if you're down bad on them, probably best to just cut it and hold Solana, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And I think you actually have, I always think, like, a lot of people don't, a lot of people just follow what uh, influencers say, which I think is dangerous. But yeah. I think you actually have to look at um, who is, um, yes, yes, you actually have to look at what the team's doing, how they promote. Um, if the meme's actually good, if you actually like it, um, the char, the market makers, you have to look at a lot of things. It's not just. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to find a good meme. It's actually even though people think even the memes is quite a left curve thing, it's actually pretty. Uh, it's it's actually more challenge like yeah challenging to actually find. The right memes compared to an altcoin it's actually it's actually pretty um high iq maybe maybe not high iq but you know it does require a lot of effort you can't just like pick a like you said you can't just pick some low cap meme and hope it does well yeah you're probably better like, to choose meme. from yeah 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 so it's not easy and like also not every like meme coin is created fairly that's the there's one i was thinking a lot of, of there's a lot of cabal tactics going on <laughs> like <laughs> this, this one is crazy this is yeah. the one i was thinking of in my head when i was talking yeah this one i actually had this one but then i sold it because uh um probably not even for profit because i just wanted to use my eth elsewhere but i didn't expect it to go down like this uh yeah, which I think is crazy 90 percent down within a, f a few weeks and this was the token that was gonna come and like challenge doge it was the new doge 
I was chilled so hard. Oh my God, crazy. So yeah, you have to, there's just as many insider tactics. So you have to find those organic memes rather than those cabal memes, which is also, it's not hard. You can kind of tell sometimes, but you have to watch out for those cabal memes. And if you think it's a cabal meme, just be careful. Like, Yeah, exactly. Even the, the related one to this Jinan, which is like oh, a yeah. Nero kind of thing, that's gone down like crazy as well. I mean, is the thing is, they could Solana? come back uh, on Solana, yeah. They could come back, but um, it's pretty, I don't, like you said, I don't like buying memes that have that, that have uh, gone down like this, unless it's it's really good. I just don't, the chart yeah, actually like... looks okay here, but. But yeah, so it's a bit scary. Like no, to buy no one really cares about Doge's sister, really. It's not really a great meme, exactly. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The, oh, the one I wanted to ask you about is, because I used to be a big fan of this token, right? But I, I did sell it because um, I got, I didn't really like the chart, but Billy, I don't know if he holds oh, this. Or yeah. You... yeah, I had a, a, I got in this at like 10, 10 million, I think. So not super wow. early, but not super late either and then it went to 300 million so i'm actually completely round tripped it but yeah this is this is pretty cabal actually kind of seems like i know uh base 16 z who's a good follow on twitter he was shilling this like crazy and <laughs> he looks like he's offloaded everything at this point yeah so, yeah I've, yeah he's I've one no of my favorite accounts yeah and yeah I, I have noticed he stopped like talking about it uh yeah i mean the thing is i do still see support for it and there's like there's there's an account i actually follow i actually respect quite a bit and he's a big holder in billy and he, he claims he hasn't sold it i mean i'm probably Lollia, not gonna or... buy it uh sorry which account is it lolly yet no oh uh broke broke ox i don't know if you follow okay. him he's not oh yeah i do yeah i uh, think so yeah, yeah. So he was very early to Pepe, uh, and mm. he's done he's done some decent other trades. Like he was early to this Kamala token, uh, oh, yeah, which yeah. he he did quite well. So yeah, even Billy, to be fair, he did quite well, but he didn't sell it. I guess you know they were calling it. This is the other thing they were calling it the next whiff. So mm. that's that's not a good. That's a bit of a risky thing. Like also with Nero, they're calling it the next Doge. So. Yeah. So that's the risky thing with these kinds of uh, tokens when it's a next something. Yeah, that's like no one that's risky. Yeah, no one called Whiff the next bonk, and because they didn't, Whiff actually managed to flip bonk, which is which was crazy to think about because everyone was like, "Oh, bonk is the biggest meme on Solana," and then this meme actually managed to take its spot. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah, and there's some other things that I. I feel like I, I was kind of early. I was actually I wasn't that early to whiff, but I got in a, a probably a decent market cap, and I didn't really buy much, but I held it, you know. And the reason why is um, I think it was just a mind share. Like, but I guess at the time there wasn't that many tokens, but I guess Ansem shilling it, it was just all over the timeline. You you have big accounts like Smolting Wasi and Autism Capital and like everyone talking about it, right? So even when it dumped like crazy, I was kind of okay to hold it. But now there's so much saturation, even if you have something like the smoking chicken fish, which everyone was talking about. Um, like, I think it can do well, but it's just more difficult just because there's so many tokens now. Yeah, that's um, the problem with memes now, for sure. Yeah. The same thing happened with NFTs as well. There was just too many and you just kind of had to buy the established ones when whenever like nfts had a big dump you had to buy only established ones or buy the new ones that were popping off yeah exactly like you're probably better off instead of smoking chicken fish you're probably better off buying with popcat or on ethereum you can buy like pepe or something instead and you yeah. you it's just but if you want a bit more risk you could probably buy smoking chicken fish i mean yeah, it still risky. has my chat yeah, and it's yeah. not the next anything as well. It's actually the original. So, mm. but then I, I don't ever want to share this meme, but I do like it, if that makes sense. Like, I'll never post this meme. Uh, yeah. uh, whereas I would post um, Giga Chad or something because it's, you know, it's actually a meme. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
All right. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about or any memes that are catching your eye? Is, is that where you're kind of still paying any attention to just still looking for new meme coins? So since Frog, I've been trying not to chase as much and just waiting for anything like that appeals to me as much as that. Um, so I have been looking at some low caps, but nothing. Oh, what? I OK, so what I have been looking at is actually Ethereum, but not really um like the vista one i mentioned yeah. um then there was something today i was looking at called um ethism it looks like some new protocol on eth um oh shit vista is still pumping man yeah yeah i don't know if it's made an all-time higher but it's it's doing pretty well because oh, i have to charge here nothing... look oh wow because there's nothing to buy on um ethereum so they you know they'll mm -hmm. just go for whatever looks decent um Jeez, this was good, man. A... 32 yeah. million market cap. Still pretty low, like, for the next pump fund, maybe. But the thing yeah, is, are people going to... Yeah. Are people going to trade shit coins on Ethereum? Maybe. Like, it's not completely out of question. But, I don't know. Probably not um... the main... Gonna be in the main place. But yeah. 30 million yeah, isn't, isn't high, like... If it is going to be the next pump fund. It feels like, uh, you know, like, um, oh, I forgot, but there was some DN404 token that went absolutely crazy on ETH like a few months ago. Um, I forgot the name, but it kind of feels like that. I mean, I don't, I had a position, but I got in and out. Um, I probably should have just held it. But yeah, this this does look pretty good. I think that they've, they've made more fees than Radium the past day um Jesus. and uh you know like the tokens are less ruggable because of i can't remember why but there's i think the the l the um when you do the initial pump fund thing it goes into the um uh lp or something i forgot but yeah there's something that makes it less ruggable i mean it's okay it still can rug but yeah uh you know so so it has something unique about it that one looks good in ETH, ETHism. I'm still trying to understand what that is, but it looks like it's a new token standard where you can insert art inside the token. Um, Jingtao, I don't know if you follow Jingtao, but... Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He was showing both yeah. of them, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he showed that one today. Oh, I think cool, he's yeah. like, probably like base 16, he's old or something, I don't know, but they seem connected. Oh, no, I think Jingtao uh, was around in the last cycle. So, basic since he's probably his old. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So three point two. Yeah, this one looks like, interesting. Yeah. 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 It looks like Jing Tao, um, Sissy first. So I'd say his name. Yeah, and Sissy some Force, other, yeah. Yeah. Some other ETH influences are in. It doesn't mean it's always good, like Nero. Yeah. But, yeah. Um. Yeah. This one looks interesting. So yeah, just looking at these new protocols on ETH because I think. Whales on ETH are kind of bored, and maybe you can just uh, flip these kind of tokens while they're while nothing's happening. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that's definitely interesting. Yeah, and then I'm just looking at. Uh, are you still looking at ordinals? I'm just keeping an eye on the prices, but I'm not looking at new ones now. So I don't know if you've seen Tapri Witches, but that's the one I'm quite looking forward to. Um, oh, you were saying, minted. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not minted, but the um, rune, the rune's pumping. So they have a rune called, um, what's it called? It's a full moon. Um, Is it on Magic and, Eden? No? Uh, yeah, it's on Magic Eden. Yeah, if you maybe change it to top volume or, or top gainer today, it might come up. Oh, there it is. This one. Yeah, that one. So... Um, you need like a certain amount of that rune to to mint. I don't know how much it is. I forgot. Or oh, you can shit, get it like is pumping, yeah, yeah. So I actually top blasted that today. I'm probably bought the top. I don't know, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm. It it feels kind of like I don't see people talking about the timeline. The um the ordinal collection looks good. It's is it like just a, a derivative word? Yeah, it is. But the interesting witches. thing. Yeah, the interesting thing is the founder, she 
designed the cat vm manual for quantum cats so there's a link to quantum cats even though it's a derivative so Man, i like this yeah. art it looks a bit like milady or something yeah, yeah exactly yeah so i think this one could do decent you know it's not going to probably do as good as ink or something like that but it does yeah. give me good vibes so that's why i top blasted the rune i might yeah, not I hold the, the rune same. for the mint but you know if the rune okay. pops a bit more i'll probably just sell it but when, when um, is the mint, you know i think it's in the next full moon so i think it's in a week or two um, okay, so still a bit of time to get in and out yeah and they're also the, the one you've got on the screen spice melange or something that rune apparently is useful for rarity or something i don't know exactly but it's very speculative so it could be a risk but yeah i noticed that they're showing that rune as well yeah because runes have been very quiet recently so it could be good if there's uh a new thing coming along um i'm sorry i mean uh ordinals and runes but particularly yeah, both of them have been very quiet recently in my in my perspective i don't know if you've probably been paying more attention to the bitcoin side of things but kind of i think the last time we spoke all the prices were uh, like relatively similar if not a little bit higher but it seems like yeah there's not a huge amount of volume going on bitcoin at the moment so but at the same time ordinals aren't dead so I don't know, I'm still very, very moderately, no, pretty bullish on ordinals for the cycle. Like they do have a great narrative. And we said the last time, I think runes, so I think runes are a bit better, but like from a narrative perspective, but well, yeah, ordinals definitely going to be keeping an eye on them. I haven't really added or sold any, just, uh, just holding for now. Yeah. yeah that's, like I do, really... I do look at them. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's that Taproot Wizards or Taproot Witches does seem really interesting. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That That is the one, that that's the next mint that's really interesting to me. Um, and then, yeah, like you, Ordinals, like, I do think there's a very strong narrative still. Um, I always look at the Bitcoin puppets. I just don't want to, even though they're, they're at a nice price now, it's still a lot of liquidity. Mm. Like, but I, I always get tempted every time I look at that price. It's pretty <laughs> nice. Um, but um, like I like you said with coins, I also think the same for ordinals and NFTs. The new things pump the hardest. So I'm always trying to keep my liquidity for new stuff. But if I was going to pick an OG project, I'd probably be picking puppets. Mm. And what's the market cap on this? Um that's why it's called blessed it's less than a mil. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah I mean, I probably should have bought small. the other one they're shilling, the uh, Melange one, but I think oh, this yeah, yeah. It's a full moon is the uh, the main one. Yes. So I thought I'll just go with that. Yeah. Wow. Very is that how much it went up in one day? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, it must have just came out today, so. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. Hopefully, hopefully this project brings back ordinals and runes. Maybe it doesn't, but but it's, yeah. uh, it's a bit Maybe of a it. standout with not much going on, I guess. Yeah, well, thanks for all this alpha. I'm going to be checking this out and um, the other memes you were talking about. Um, yeah, I think that's probably enough i think that was enough that we covered i think there's a, a lot of alpha in this little video so thanks a million again for coming back on confugen obviously if anyone wants to follow confugen highly recommend and he also has a telegram shill channel so i'll link that in the description as well uh so yeah thanks a million for coming back on bro yeah no no it was it was great catching up again and uh yeah, now I have to do more homework on uh, deep in <laughs> deep in AI. <laughs> yeah, I do think like I do think things are going to be quiet for the next few months. So I don't think I don't think you need to be in a, a crazy rush. You don't need to be FOMOing into anything. In my opinion, I think you have plenty of time to kind of you know get settled and get ready for the next next big wave of, of crypto. In my opinion, anyway. Sounds good. All right, man. Thanks a million. I'll chat to you. Maybe we can do it again next week if you're available.
Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do it. All right, sweet man. All right, talk to you later. Cheers. All right, man. Take it easy. Bye.